We are going to call our student by name Sheikh Muhammad Jaladin to come here and give a word of Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it possible for him. Alhamdulillah, we give thanks and praises to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this melodious sound from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May the Almighty Allah blessings be upon him. I think at this stage, we are about to start the actual purpose of us being here this evening. And that is what I said earlier. The one to do the presentation is Mr. Idris Al Hassan Tabkoha. Our brother will give us the message. Aus Billahi Mina Shaitan Rajim. Bismillahi Rahman Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatu. Ladies and gentlemen of the press, friends and family alike. Leadership of the Ambaria Sunni community and I welcome you to our press briefing as regards the legal entanglement between our community and some family members of late Professor Abu Bakari Al Hassan. We particularly thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the privilege of good health, sound mind, and the very rare privilege of Deen al Islam. Let me take this opportunity to extend my profound gratitude 
to the supreme leader of the Ambaria Sunni community, Sheikh Abu Bakr, Sheikh Said Abu Bakr Zakaria, under whose wise counsel and leadership the Ambaria Sunni community continue to leapfrog from one success to another. May I also take the opportunity to pray for less mercy for our foundation leader and forebearer under whose stellar leadership Ambaria took a declared flight. I repeat, a flight, not fright, and not retribution. I mean Ambaria Yaya, our forebearer declared. In the same tone, may I salute the gallant legal representation of the Institute for a good job done so far. We can only be grateful to Allah SWT for your honest and selfless service to the Ummah. Ladies and gentlemen of the press, before I delve into the substantive matter beforehand this afternoon, permit me to take us through the memory lane to understand exactly what the Ambaria Sunni community is about. The Ambaria Sunni community began in the early 1940s by the Islamic Renaissance activities of its founder, Sheikh Yusuf Saleh Ajra, popularly referred to as Afanjura. Afanjura started his da'wah by preaching from village to village, town to town, and later began teaching the Holy Quran and Hadith in his Sakasaka home. This will later grow to become the Ambaria Islamic Institute in 1951. The pioneering students of the institute were 24 in number, the current leader of the community being one of them. Fadjura sacrificed everything to realize the dream and vision of practicing an unadulterated Islam in Ghana and beyond. With his vision, resilience, determination, and strife, Ambaria has developed into the biggest Islamic institute in Ghana and one of its kind in West Africa. Ambaria now has over 50 pro-tertiary learning institutions and two tertiary learning institutions across the nation, providing learning opportunities to many in quest to learn. The core mandate of the community has always been and remained to train and equip the youth and the ummah in knowledge and sound Islamic value systems. This resolve got it to start the Ambaria Technical University College, the landed property and ownership of which is a subject of litigation under the instance of the leadership of the Ambaria Sunni community. The community preaches and stands for peace in its dealings as manifest in the current legal brouhaha. Though our community had the resource and human might to take what rightfully belonged to us, after the Regional Security Council Committee report, which declared the, the land or the land under litigation to be our property, we cho chose to go to court when the defendant here in the case, failed to respect the ruling of the Rexel Committee then. Now, on to the main theme of the press briefing today. That is the legal matter that calls for this afternoon's briefing. We need to understand the genesis, the root of the legal tango or tussle between us and the family of Professor Abakari Al-Hassan today. The construction and subsequent administration of the Ambaria Tenka University was entrusted in the hands of late Professor Abu Bakar Al Hassan by the Ambaria Sunni community. Let me state unequivocally and for want of clarity that Professor Abu Bakar Al Hassan was only employed as a consultant to the project and was paid. 25,000 United States dollars for his services rendered to the community. 
He was then made a trustee for the Ambaria Tenka University College after his commissioning in 2004. He, the late Professor Abakara Al Hassan, along the line, unilaterally and dubiously changed the name from Ambaria Tenka University College to Technical University College of Tamale. This singular act of gross insubordination did not go down well with the leadership of the Institute of Ambaria and thus demanded the handing over of the university back to the Ambaria community and its leadership. Professor Abakari was adamant to doing so. He subsequently reported the matter to the schemes of the then regent of Dabon, His Royal Majesty, Kampakuyana Abdullah Yakubu Andani, now you now. The Kampakuyana requested the Northern Regional Security Council to conduct an independent investigation into the matter and ascertain the true owner of the Technical University. This was how the RECSEC committee activities began. What exactly did the RECSEC report recommend? So even before we go to their recommendation, permit me to share with you the composition of the very membership of the committee that gave a verdict and a disrespect to which we have landed ourselves in court. The first person on the committee list was Six Garrison Command Representative, Air Commodore Philip Aisa. The second person was a representative of Yoku, and he was duly represented by Mr. J.T. Ajiko. Then the third person was Attorney General's Department Representative, and the rep was Mr. Salia Abdul Kudus. Then Ghana Education Service Representative, he was represented by Mr. Patrick Yabu Aminu. Then the fifth person, Tamil Metropolitan Assembly Representative, by name Mr. Akwiti Samson. And then the safe and last, a representative of the Northern Regional Coordinating Council by name Mr. Sobul Haq Fusini. Ladies and gentlemen, this particular committee was not at the behest of the leadership of the Ambaria Sunni community. It was under the guided leadership of the then Regional Security Council, Northern Regional Coordinating Council. And then it was by the request of the then overlord of Dabon, Kampakuyana, who is the current Savulugu Lana. Friends and family from the media, let it be noted again that the committee was established with the main mandate to investigate into the underlying facts pertaining to the true ownership of the then Ambaria Tenka University College, now Tenka University College of Tamale, guided by the main objective to ascertain the true owner of the institution and how it was established. The committee and its work revolved around five main themes. One, to identify the processes leading to land acquisition for the university. Two, to identify the sources of funding for the university. Three, to identify the original name of the institution. Then four, registration and acquisition accreditation processes. Then fifth and last, existence and composition of college council of the university, if any. These were the fi five terms of reference of the committee of RECSEC. Compatriots and colleagues from the media fraternity, permit me to touch on at least two of the above stated grounds for the work of the committee, because today is not a day to discuss the report of the committee, but to dispel the misinformations running around the media platforms. So, but two of the recommendations are very tangent to the purpose and objective of the, the gathering this afternoon. So look at land acquisition and sources of funding. According to the RECSEC report, the land was acquired 
by the Ambaria Sunni community from the then Vitin Lana Saibu Yabani and confirmed by the Gutena, the Guptogoban Lana, and now the Mashena Al Haji Zablim Abdullah in 1999. Let's pay attention here. There is an allocation letter to this effect indicating how the land was acquired. And then the committee found, looked into that matter. And then on funding, the funding for the project was for, the funding for the project was donated by the Islamic Development Bank, IDB, to Ambaria Islamic Institute. This was confirmed by professor, late Professor Abakar Al-Hassan himself when he appeared before the RECSEC committee. You can find details of this in page 18 of the RECSEC report, which is a public document as we speak now. The recommendations of the RECSEC committee. What exactly did they share with the public and the feeding, party, feeding parties at the time? In view of the findings of fact made above, the committee hereby made the following recommendations. That one, the university college should revert to its original name of Ambaria Tenka University College. That was recommendation number one by the Rexa committee. Number two, that even though Professor Abu Bakar Al Hassan played a useful role in the establishment of the university college, his continued involvement in the affairs of the university college would, would promote would not promote peace, as there is so much animosity, distrust, and bad blood between him and leadership of the Ambaria Islamic Institute. He should therefore be relieved of any role he is currently playing at the university college. This was the recommendation number two of the RECSEC report. Number three, that an interim management committee should be put in place as an interim measure to manage the university council until the university college until a substantive administrative structures are put in place for the effective running of the college by the Anbaria Islamic Institute. Number four, that an inventory of property belonging to the Anbaria Islamic Institute be conducted, be taken, and a proper handing over should be done by Professor Abakar Al Hassan to the Anbaria Islamic. Institute. Recommendation number five, that students of the university college should be maintained as at, should be maintained, university, let me repeat that again, that students of the university college should not be moved to any other campus as they are students of the Vitin campus. Number six, the academic staff of the university college should be maintained as they are being paid from the school, paid, uh, school fees paid by students of the university. These were the five, six recommendations of the RECSE committee. As media, friends, and family, you may want to find out, so if Ambaria had this report as his hand, why did it wait so long to take what belonged to it? That is a legitimate question to ask. But let me also point us that point out that if the committee educated in the, like, that is, let me also point out that the institute were guided largely by a letter written by the then regent of Dabon, you uh, now today, got providing some guidance as to what should happen after the verdict of the uh, director committee. It is captured in exactitude, letter reference GBPL 11.6, issued on the 2nd of August, 2011. And I quote, the Dewa Palace has learned that the graduation of the final year student is stalled or is being stalled because of the directive from your committee on the affiliation of the institution, which was not part of the work of my request. End of quote. Paragraph 4 continues. It is essential that all parties concerned should ensure that the student do not suffer from the work of the committee. 
let's pay some emphasis here. This admonition from the then overlord guided every approach the Ambaria Sunni community took as a consequential action in respect to the verdict it got to the, from the Rexa committee. The students were always the paramount basis for the human face leadership of the Ambari Islamic Institute constantly attached to every process and procedure of the resolution process. It is still that same spirit that will make it difficult to reason with anybody today requesting we remove and evacuate from the current premises over 2,000 students and act we consciously restrain ourselves conducting when it was only a concern of less than a hundred students of the Tekka University College at the time. That is where I will leave this. And then we move into the substantive matter, the legal case. Now to the aspect that has gained so much traction in the media and various platforms and has become a constant source of misinformation and disinformation by the disgruntled family of late Professor Abdullah uh, Abakari Al-Hassan. Ladies and gentlemen of the media, let me bring to your notice that the general public has been served with a great deal of misinformation as regards the cases or case before the court of law. There are, at the moment, six cases that have arisen from the original case of Ambaria. Case number one is a substantive case that was sent to court by the, by the Ambaria Islamic Institute. Then case number two, the appeal case. Number three, contempt of court, which, was, which is in the high court. Then we have number four, appeal against the contempt. Number five, assault case, which is in the circuit court. And then six, the interlocutory injunction that was filed by the defendant applicant to requesting the justices to remove or restrain Ambaria from occupying the eastern block of the institute. Now, let's look at the six cases, one after the other. On the substantive case, the substantive matter in the high court is for the declaration of ownership of the Ambaria Tenka University College and the land. These are the two issues or concerns of the main case. And it was filed by the Islam uh, Ambaria Islamic Institute in 2019. Case number two, the appeal case. Appealed, this particular appeal case is an appeal that was filed by the Ambaria Islamic Institute against a judgment delivered on the request by the defendant applicant to change their pleadings, which was unceremoniously granted when the case almost ran to a conclusion. So we're in this legal tango over a year, and we're almost running into the end of the matter. Then the defendant applicant decided to change his case, the pleadings he brought to the case, uh, to the court. And same was granted the defendant applicant to which the leadership of the Ambaria Sunni community appealed against. That matter is still pending and no resolution has thus been reached on that. And then we have the contempt of court, the subject of the current um, legal or media Halibalu uh, being chained around here and there. Ladies and gentlemen of the press, another aspect of the case is a contempt, which is at the high court. Seven people were charged on contempt of court by Dr. Osman Al Hassan, a heir to lead Professor Abdullah, late Professor Abakari Al Hassan, as an interested party over the construction of a 10-unit open-top urinary pit for student boys of the Ambaria Senior High School. A judgment was delivered on that, and an appeal has thus been made against the ruling 
by the Ambaria Islamic Ambaria Sunni community. We are therefore waiting for the appeal process to take its due course, despite the glaring gaps in the ruling herein delivered and the many reservations we hold against it. As believers in the rule of law, we declare further comments on the case of the defendant applicant as our, lawyer, as our lawyers are pursuing the matter through the courts to get what, in our view, is an anomaly corrected and corrected for good. Interlocutory injunction, the last case. The general public has constantly been misinformed that Ambaria is occupying the structures in the eastern block of the SHS, Ambaria Senior High School at Vitin Idigali. Let me state, without fear of equivocation, that Ambaria, uh, uh, an interlocutory injunction was filed against Ambaria, praying the court to restrain and inject Ambaria from continuing to occupy that particular section of the senior high school. The court held that before the applicant, the defendant applicant could advance a case and get a favorable ruling from the court, he needed to first and foremost establish right of ownership of the location. Because if you don't establish right of ownership, you have no grounds to be requesting for others to be restrained from using the location. So this was the ruling of the court at the time. And in addition, a cost of 2000 was awarded against the defendant applicant in the name of Dr. Osman Al-Hassan, a heir to late Professor Abakar Al-Hassan. And this cost was actually paid to the Ambaria Islamic Institute. So dispel any form of misinformation running around that a purported decision has been attained to get Ambaria out of the location of the senior high school. As we speak, Monday, students will be reporting, the first year students will be reporting to join continuing students. And government, the father of all of us, have placed students there and will be undergoing the registration processes by the divine grace of Allah SWT come Monday. In conclusion, let me state on behalf of my learned sheikhs, my mentors, my ulama, fathers, and mothers, that the Ambaria Sunni community is a law-abiding entity. We have every confidence in the judicial system. That is why we took the case or the matter to the court in the first place. At the time, the family of late Abakari illegitimately occupied the structures of the Ambaria Sunni uh, is a senior high school and for that matter, the Technical University College. We had the human might. We had the resource might by the divine grace of Allah, of Allah SWT to have Get, get, uh, gotten them out of their place after the RECSEC committee report, but we chose not to do so. Rather, when they failed to respect the judgment of the RECSEC committee, we took them to court to ensure that the matters are addressed before a competent court of jurisdiction. So that is precisely so. So we are an entity that is respectful, uh, respectful of rule of law and we respect the legal establishments within the country. We therefore appeal to all in sundry to disregard any misinformation peddled in the media, including the social media as regards this case. We also appeal to the public to discard the misinformation that the Ambaria Islamic Institute, and for that matter, the Ambaria Sunni community, is said, was said to be getting impatient over the court process and will therefore take the law into our own hands. This has never been our position and would not be today or tomorrow. We took the court, the matter to court because of our confidence in the court system and the judicial process to deliver justice 
for us. We take this opportunity to render a humble call on the Ghana Education Service, whose battle we have been fighting over the past five years to develop interest in the matter. Let me remind them, this is not a, a fight for Ambaria. It is a fight between the generality of humanity, not only Ghanaians, and the family of a select few. So we call on all of us to give it the necessary attention and take what belongs to the community to the community and not make a mistake of ceding away a public property to a private entity. This we should not leave to witness in our lives. We also call on the Metro Security Council and the Regional Security Council and the Chief Justice of the Republic of Ghana to facilitate a speedy adjudication of the case. Because we've realized that each time the case is getting to its conclusion, the defendants will throw in new delay tactics to delay the matter further and it is hampering the development of the senior high school that is currently operating from that site. Finally, we send an SOS call to the government of the Republic of Ghana to take leading interest on the matter and ensure that justice is done and done rightly. That remains the saying that justice delayed is justice denied. Each time we sleep and wake up each passing day with the matter unresolved, it is a great source of concern for our elders. Sir Said Abakar Zakaria and his able lieutenant, Sheikh Tanko Ishak Abakar. And we are therefore sending this SOS call to all the powers that be to ensure that the matter is speedily, uh, uh, what do you call it, dissolved off. Ambaria is not and has never been impatient, but we resolve to resist any attempt to unlawfully take what rightfully belongs to us. And for that matter, what belongs to the general, generality of the public to a kleptomaniac few family and friends? We say this and we mean it. If not greed, why would take any particular individual to want to take what is benefiting the entire community for the benefit of a single family? May I end by praying for Allah's blessing for our Sheikh and Ulama and thank the media sincerely and graciously for spending their time with us this afternoon. Long live Ambaria, long live Dagon, long live Ghana. Allah bless us all and I thank you all for listening. والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته. أتقبيل. 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 الحمد لله الحمد لله يا مولى أمبريا يغيا أمبريا يغيا.